the internet provides ample evidence that millennials enjoy their pets. Millennials have unseated baby boomers as the largest pet-owning generation. Millennials welcome four-legged friends into their lives at an average age of 21, considerably younger than their baby boomer elders who waited until age 29 to get their first pet. Whether it is for companionship, a preparatory step for the family they have been delaying, or filling some gap, millennials are taking their pets seriously and pampering them at unprecedented rates. The world is divided into two different types of people, dog people and cat people. With over 4.5 billion cat videos posted online, cats are a top pick for millennials. 60% of millennials watch cat videos online, possibly buying into one body of research that says watching cat videos can make you more productive at work. Grumpy Cat, her real name is Tartar Sauce, is perhaps the most famous and richest of the internet felines. Half of millennials own cats, and half of the cat-owning millennials confess to telling their cat secrets that no one else knows. What about dogs? Millennials are adopting pups at a high rate too, with 57% of millennial households owning a dog compared with 51% of all U.S. households. While there is strong agreement among millennials about the merits of pet ownership, the segregation between dog people and cat people continues uninterrupted, as it has for generations. We choose our loyalty between dogs and cats, much like we choose our favorite sports team. And like our favorite teams, we tend to find fault with the opposing team and cheerfully overlook the shortcomings on our own side. Dog people commonly hold negative impressions of cats, such as cats only care about themselves, are loners, are cold and unfeeling, and black cats bring bad luck. Not to be outdone, cat people hold their own negative perceptions of dogs, usually vilifying them by breed rather than amassing all dogs into a single cohort. Whatever our bias, dogs or cats, we acquired it as a result of the knowledge and experiences we've had. Biases and stereotypes are normal. We all have them. We hold biases about pets, people, members of a certain generation, careers, our business competition, industries, products, beliefs, about almost everything. As we expand our knowledge and broaden our experiences, we naturally challenge our biases and our stereotypes, usually with good outcomes. The more you are open to learning about a wide range of things, people and experiences, especially those unfamiliar to you, the more your potential has a chance to fully mature and your own life is enriched. One of your greatest challenges is to ensure that your biases, either conscious or unconscious ones, don't hold you back or prevent you from reaching your potential.